Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the May 15, 2023 edition of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit and fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. Today's podcast offers some more insight into what top 150 distributors think about the current business climate, and we'll take a look at some of the largest construction projects they're supplying or have seen on the drawing boards in their local market areas. We will also check out some weekly economic indicators that can give you a sense of where the U.S. economy and electrical market may be headed. These five weekly indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series for 2023. For the week ending May the 6th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial claims was 264,000, and that's an increase of 22,000 from the previous week's unrevised level of 242,000. This is the highest level for initial claims since the October 30th, 2021, when it was 264,000. The U.S. unemployment rate for the month of April is 3.4%. These five states had the largest decreases in unemployment claims for the week ending May the 6th. Kentucky was down 3,015. Colorado's unemployment claims were down 1,517. Georgia was down 1,116. New Hampshire's claims were down 497. And Wisconsin's claims were down 460. We had a fair number of states that came in with unemployment claims of more than 1,000 for the week ending May the 6th. Massachusetts led the list with 6,375 more claims. California came in with 2,924 more claims. Missouri came in at 2,447. Texas was in there at 1,471. New York came in at 1,324. And then Ohio came in at 1,045. One of the more interesting leading economic indicators for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic. It's a measure of the amount of more materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly at www.aar.org. The most recent week's data showed that total U.S. weekly rail traffic was 471,000, 859 carloads and intramotor units, and that is down 6.6% compared with the same week last year. Total combined U.S. freight traffic for the first 18 weeks of 2023 was 8,370,864 carloads and intramotor units, and that is a decrease of 5.6% compared to last year. Five of the 10 carload commodity groups posted an increase compared with the same week in 2022. They included metallic ores and metals up 2.8% to 20,697, Non-metallic minerals up 4% to 35,326 carloads. Petroleum and petroleum products up 11.6% to 10,133. The commodity groups that posted decreases compared to the same week in 2022 included chemicals down 5.8%, intermodal units down 10.9%, and grain down 6% to 21,700. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count, which tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count, which tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. The total rig count dropped by seven rigs in in the most recent data, which for Baker Hughes is a pretty significant drop because the data is most often only changes by one or two rigs per week. The Permian Basin was responsible for much of this decline with a decrease of five rigs, and the Eagle Ford Basin in Texas lost three rigs. The current price of West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil, or WTI, as of May 15th is $70.41 per barrel. That's according to macrotrends.net. The average price of uh, of WTI per barrel in 2023 is $76.36. 
Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's a leading economic indicator for future business activity since copper is used in so many industries. The construction industry is among the leading markets for copper because of its use in wiring cable and copper plumbing pipe. Coleman copper prices as of May the 15th are $3.78 per pound. They have been below $4 per pound for the month of May. The average price for the year is still sitting at above $4 per pound and it is at $4.06 per pound. Now let's take a look at uh, some of the results of our Top 150 Distributor Survey, which will be published in two weeks. Quite a bit of good data and insight into some of the business conditions as seen by the Top 150 Distributors. 2002 was a pretty good year for the Top 150 Distributors, with the average increase at the high end of the uh, typical range, which is between 4 and 8%. A couple of percentage points of that increase was due to pricing, as you can imagine. And you can see that in the chart here, where it, were ranked by the number of mentions. Uh, inflation or pricing is up. It was up one of the highest uh, categories for responses. Uh, generally speaking, the increase in cost of man was another big uh, response to the survey. Better economy, right about the same. Taking market share, also right in that same area of about 12, 12 distributors uh, gave that as a response. Uh, more construction business was also a, a very common response, as were ex expansion efforts and new channel sales. Some folks pointed to supplier growth, others to organic growth. A bigger focus on customer service, also big. Uh, the decline of COVID issues, acquisitions, quality of their employees, new marketing efforts, uh, data center business was called out in particular, and that the uh, hiring of more salespeople also contributed to a better business year for many of our top 150 distributors. I found the answers to this question one of the most interesting in our survey. We asked them basically, what do they expect for 2023 growth? And despite the uh, current economic conditions and the uncertainty about the U.S. economy, as you can see, our top 150 distributors are still quite bullish, even if you consider uh, uh, taking in a two, maybe three points for inflation growth. Uh, but we, we got responses from 89 different distributors filled out this question uh, between six and nine for, for looking at growth of between six and nine percent. We had 21 percent. The largest category actually was over a double digit growth. Uh, 28 percent were looking for growth between 10 and 14 percent. 12 percent were looking at growth of 15 to 19 percent and almost 17 percent were looking for 20 percent or better growth. Only a 6.7 percent were said they don't expect any growth in 2023. I'm always impressed with the variety of large construction projects that the top 150 distributors work on, even more so this year with all the uncertainty about the U.S. economy. Let's take a look at some of the largest projects that they're working on. We had respondents write in with about the work that they're doing or expect to be doing in battery plants in Michigan, Ohio, and Kansas. One distributor talked about the Air Force Academy Visitor Center that they're working on in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, we had a, one or two distributors actually called out the semiconductor plant that's being built by Intel in New Albany, Ohio. The Charleston, South Carolina port is seeing a lot of activity. One Philadelphia-based distributor talked about the Sparks Therapeutics Gene Therapy Facility in Philadelphia, which is a huge, huge job. In the Cleveland area, distributors talked about the Cleveland Clinic Neurology Project there, the Cleveland Brown Stadium. We also talked had people talk about the Facebook, Google, and Yahoo data centers in Iowa. Uh, one distributor based in Huntsville, Alabama, talked about the FBI projects in that area. Georgia Power Grid Modernization made the list, as did the Indiana Health University Hospital in, in Indianapolis. Uh, just a continuation of some of the other projects that distributors are working on. JFK Airport was mentioned by several distributors in New York, as was the J.P. Morgan Chase Tower in Midtown Manhattan. Facility Solutions Group talked about the Netflix production campus going to be built in Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, and also the Lionsgate Studios for movie production being built in Newark, New Jersey. Out in the Midwest, in St. Louis, the National Geospatial Agency or the NGA West facility is being built. That's a billion dollar project right there. Big projects being built by Nucor Steel and expan expansion in Kentucky. There are two different sites, I believe. In Pittsburgh, we had the Pittsburgh Airport, which was recently renovated, and also it looks like a new terminal going in there. University of Pittsburgh has got some housing projects and labs being built, and the new FNB Tower being built in Pittsburgh. Out on Long Island, you have the Brookhaven National Labs, the new ring particular accelerator up to New York. Uh, on the West Coast, LAX Airport in Los Angeles. And in Cincinnati, University of Cincinnati has seen some classroom and office construction being built. 
That wraps up our podcast for today, and a special thanks to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series for 2023. Please contact me if there's any other type of economic data you would like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on June 12th, 2023. The next week, I'll be at the Light Fair Show in New York, and if any of you are heading for that, I hope to see you there. Look forward to chatting with you if I do. Until then, be happy, be healthy, and look forward to talking with you in several weeks.